Presented by Phoenix Rising. Vacuum sealing for preparedness, including firearms. Introduction. Phoenix Rising here, and today we're going to talk about using a vacuum sealer for general preparedness. Uh, originally this video was going to be about vacuum sealing firearms and ammunition as a way to preserve them in less than favorable environments as a cheap way of doing it, albeit not as durable. Uh, and then as I started going through the video, what I found out was that, hey, you know, there's so many uses for this thing from a preparedness standpoint that uh, I really wanted to change the tone of the video and cover vacuum sealing in general and some of the thoughts and ideas for why you might want one, what you might do with it, and how it can benefit you, in addition to the aforementioned preserving a firearm. So uh, we'll go ahead and I'll put an index up here. We'll go over the machine and, and general usage of it uh, first, and then we'll take a look at items that are vacuum sealed, just to give you some ideas for how this might be useful to you. And then lastly, we'll go into uh, preserving a firearm or hard items that are a little more difficult to vacuum seal than, than a lot of other things. And then the last thing uh, we'll do in this video is I'll do an unboxing or an unpackaging where I had a, a, a firearm preserved, vacuum sealed for three to four years uh, in a very much less than optimal environment and even went through a car crash where this thing was everything in the whole vehicle was thrown around because the vehicle went upside down uh, and held up okay. So uh, if, you, if you're interested in doing that, there'll be a section on that, on that more towards the end of the video. So let's go ahead, post the index, and get into it. Basics of vacuum sealing. Okay, let's talk about vacuum sealers and vacuum sealing in general first. Uh, this is a Food Saver V2222 uh, that just happens to be the model that I have. There are a bunch of manufacturers and a bunch of different models out there. And I can't tell you what's best, but I will say I've had this for about seven years and I have used the ever living heck out of it. Okay, mostly for food, but as well as for uh, storing other items. So uh, we'll go over just basic operation of a vacuum. Uh, sealer, how it works, materials you need, and then we'll get into, then we'll show you some items later on. So, uh, this is a Food Saver V2222, and pretty much all your basic Food Saver or vacuum sealing devices are going to have three things, three controls on. You're going to have a lever to lock the lids for the sealing process. You're going to have a seal button, and you're going to have a vacuum button, okay, that normally vacuums, pulls a vacuum, and then performs a sealing process once it gets to the preset vacuum that it's set that it's designed for okay so a couple things about this unit uh, you open it up and pretty much all of them what you're going to find and I'll insert some pictures here you're going to find a trough that's designed to catch liquids with a foam rubber seal around it and both top and bottom that's your actual vacuum chamber a lot of them will have like this one did have a uh, a, a little tray that went in there so if you're vacuum sealing you know chicken or something like that and there's a little bit of juice comes out while you pull this vacuum it'll catch it make it easier to clean and stop the goop from getting into the internals of the machine and ruining it so uh, you'll have that then right below closer to the edge of the machine you're going to have a textured strip that's actually a heat heating element and that's going to melt the plastic and fuse it once you have a vacuum pulled as well as to create a seal on an open-ended bag uh, and that's basically it. You close it down, you have a lever that's going to compress those seals and lock into place, and uh, that's pretty much it for the machine. Now, uh, you do need special bags for the vacuum sealing portion. You might be able to seal other bags, but uh, all of your vacuum material is going to have a texture to it. And this texture is so that when you clamp down and close the lid, there's air passages for you to pull the air out and get a vacuum. If it's just a regular Ziploc bag, it, it locks it smooth, it can't pull the air through, so you might be able to seal it, but you wouldn't be able to put a vacuum on it, okay? Now, in talking about these materials, your standard vacuum machines 
are normally 11 inches wide, the ceiling bags, and then they also have uh, 9 inch bags. And you can buy pre-made bags, all this other mess, but those tend to be prohibitively expensive, especially if you're buying Food Saver brand or like a high dollar brand. Uh, you're better off to go on Amazon or Fleabay and just look for roll vacuum sealing rolls or whatever. And you're going to find that you can get this stuff 50 foot rolls for, you know, 10, 20 bucks, something like that. And, and that goes a hell of a long way. Uh, I've probably ordered twin 50 foot rolls maybe two or three times in the seven years I've had this particular device and I still have spare rolls in addition to what I'm actually using at this time. So it is pretty, uh, they, they do last a long time and it can be cost effective if you get the right materials, okay? Uh, so that's pretty much it for the vacuum sealing machine itself. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some items that I've vacuum sealed to give you an idea of some uses for it and things that you might not have thought about. Examples and ideas. Okay, let's talk about things you can vacuum seal. Yay, let's play. Uh, in no particular order. Batteries. Okay, if you've got a, a get home bag in your car or an emergency bag for in case, you know, first aid supplies, whatever. Uh, you're normally going to keep a flashlight in your car. It's always good to have spare batteries or maybe even no batteries in it and just spare batteries because as we all know these things will sit and over time a lot, especially cheaper brand, by the way, don't ever get the utility or starts with a U, whatever the hell Lowe's carries because I had more of those things leak on me and almost ruin stuff than any other brand I have ever, have ever bought. Utilitech, I think that's what they're called. I stay away from them. Anyway, uh, so here we have some AAA batteries for a headlamp, uh, vacuum sealed in packs of three, which is what the headlamps use. And uh, something you can also do with a vacuum sealer is, you, on, for smaller items, you can actually put a couple of seals across the middle of a bag and make separate compartments or even smaller packs so you don't have to go 9 inches or 11 inches wide. So here I have a couple sets of batteries for a headlamp. They're vacuum sealed. I keep them in my emergency bag in the truck. If I need my light, I'll, I can tear it open and do it. But if they leak, they're not going to. They're not going to ruin my stuff. And and because battery acid's some nasty stuff. So uh, batteries. Next thing, something that's everybody's favorite in 2020, toilet paper. Okay, uh, you know. If you keep toilet paper in your vehicle, which is a very good idea just because uh, you might have a moment someday, but uh, you keep it in there and the roll gets shredded, even if it's in a Ziploc bag, it gets pretty tore up and whatnot. Uh, as an alternative to that, vacuum seal it, okay? If you need it, tear it open, And but look at that. that this, is, this is like a big roll of cotton L. This isn't, you know, this isn't uh, gas station toilet paper here, and it's Pretty solid, a lot of the air taken out. I have cut these open and used them, and they do re-expand partially, and they're usable. It's not like you're wiping your butt with a brick or something. Uh, so yeah, toilet paper, great thing to vacuum, seal, and keep. Lighters or fire starters. If you've got a little fire starter with a striker, odds are some of it's carbon steel, it'll rust and get crappy on you. You can preserve that, but Bic lighters, uh, and by the way, I've had cheaper lighters and you know you keep them in a vehicle. I don't know if you've experienced it, but they'll eventually they'll the gas will leak down or whatever else. Bix hold up better than anything else. No substitute for them. But keep in mind your traditional Bix have a spring to hold the flint, a little bit of moisture, a little bit of dampness it gets in there, and that spring will deteriorate. I found one just today, actually. Uh, I went to use it and I got nothing but dust coming out of it because the spring had corroded away enough that it was not able to spark full of butane but not usable that will prevent this or this will prevent that how's that medical supplies another really good item uh, if you keep uh, keep an emergency medical kit in your vehicle or your boat your backpack uh, some of them are all nice and sealed and all that other stuff but you know I prefer to build my own medical kit if I'm going to uh, backpack or, or for preparedness uh, and it's still a bit cheaper so, uh, you know, the wrapping on this stuff, some of it's pretty decent, but I found several times 
<coughs> gauze and items like that. The packaging may deteriorate and split open and now you have something that's not necessarily sterile. Uh, you can prevent that with using, uh, using a vacuum seal. Bar soap, another item gets wet, it uh, makes a shit house mess, uh, and uh, or other items like that. Food. Uh, now these are this is emergency rations. I normally keep these in a bag in the truck in case you you know you can break down out in the middle of nowhere or something, and uh, you find out pretty quick how much you appreciate having a little something to eat, whether it's tasty or not. So uh, keep a couple of these in my vehicle. And I've actually vacuum sealed these individually and then put them in another vacuum sealed layer. And uh, that'll just a little bit more stops them from getting damaged or beat up or whatever else. So uh, there you have it. That's just a few ideas. I'm sure you can think of a lot more. And uh, it's cheap. It's easy. The only catch is, is vacuum sealing is somewhat frail. If it's going to get beat around a lot or has sharp edges, which we'll get to in a moment, uh, you're going to have to take some extra steps. So anyway few ideas for vacuum sealing. Vacuum sealing firearms and other equipment. Okay, so let's talk about what this video was originally going to be about, and that is uh, how to vacuum seal and preserve firearms and ammunition to where it will give you some kind of longevity if treated properly. So, uh, what drove me to do this in the first place was uh, this is a Keltec Sub 9. This is a predecessor to the Sub 2000 that's on the market today in different guises and uh, calibers and whatnot. And uh, I used to keep this in my vehicle as a truck rifle. Uh, and I had it in a nice padded case, which I'll show you because that's kind of relevant here. Uh, and this was one of the cases that I used for it. Very nice thick padded case, probably, you know, uh, half three quarters of an inch padding all the way around roomy enough for it and some ammunition and some magazines. So uh, that was basically what I had in my truck. Uh, then what I found out was that apparently I had a, it ended up being a, a slight roof leak or a crack in one of the seams in the rain troughs on the roof, but I was getting some a little bit of water ingress into the vehicle causing it to be very humid after rains and as a result of that I ended up getting a little bit of surface rust on this firearm. And I thought, well, that's definitely unacceptable. I don't want to not be able to keep it uh, under the deck in the back. And I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want it to get damaged, obviously. So the solution I came up with was using a vacuum sealer. Now, uh, this is small and light enough to wear 11 inch material. I could make a bag to hold it. And that's a, what I did initially. I just vacuum sealed it and said, okay, let's see how that works. That lasted like a week. Not much, because when you vacuum seal something, you are putting a little bit of stress on the plastic, and all these edges, which maybe aren't razor sharp, but they're sharp enough that with a little bit of movement or anything else, uh, the material got compromised, no seal. Uh, so what I did, I, I went through two or three tries of this before I finally came up with what I ended up using. And I'll show you the materials now, and you'll get to see them in a minute because we're going to do the unpackaging after three to four years of storage like this. Uh, first thing I did uh, was this. I, may, I used four separate layers of material, two of those being vacuum seal material. Uh, the first layer going around the, the gun and the magazines was this. Basically, this is foam grippy shelf paper. Okay, you can see, kind of see through it pretty good here. And it's very compressible, very light, and stretchy, not very stretchy, but stretchy and rubbery. So I wrapped the weapon and the magazines in that to basically alleviate any sharp corners or edges on anything, okay? Uh, wrap that, kind of tape that in place so that it was held very good. Inside a vacuum uh, bag, sealed it, and that worked okay, but it still became compromised after not a, as long of a time as I wanted. Uh, so what I did, I, I redid the vacuum sealing on it, redid the packaging, and then once I vacuum sealed it, I went ahead and took basically just poster board, you know, your, I don't know if this is 50 pound, maybe cardboard or whatever, but I took poster board, and then once I had it vacuum sealed, I basically made an envelope type of a setup, and uh, made an envelope type of a setup, taped that in place, then put that inside another layer of vacuum sealing and pulled a vacuum on that and sealed that. 
and uh, I'll put a picture here so you see what the package looks like and then we'll go ahead and do the unboxing in a minute. Once I did that, this lasted for two years in that, uh, in that foam padded case, uh, two years, actually more like three years, two years in a vehicle and uh, riding around, heat, cold, moisture. Uh, I even had a pretty horrific car crash that the vehicle actually flipped over uh, so it went flying, everything went flying, and bounced around harshly inside, and the vacuum seal stayed intact, okay? It wasn't until about a, almost a six months or a year after that that I said, well, you know, let me just take a look and see if the seal was intact, but I wanted to take a look and see, and that's what you're going to see here in a minute. So uh, that was the methodology I used, and it works, okay? Uh, you could use the same thing for tools or equipment, anything that you're worried about water getting in and causing problems on. Now, uh, ammunition. You would think ammunition would be just vacuum seal it and hey, you're good. I mean, it's cardboard. It's soft. Uh, but no, uh, actually ammunition I found to be a little bit challenging as well. Uh, again, because the cardboard's maybe a little pointed, uh, a little sharp, uh, that'll break the seal. Uh, and that's probably the biggest thing. That has got enough mass, so if it bumps into something sharp, it's going to poke a hole through it. So what I ended up doing there was I, I took several different types of ammunition. I had some boxes of this cheap wolf ball ammunition and some Remington hollow points here. But what I did was I layered about six or eight layers of uh, saran type wrap, cling wrap, around it to give it a soft cushiony buffler. Bu buffler. Uh, buffer similar to this and then uh, then maybe put it inside a grocery bag or a Walmart bag you know and wrap that around it then I vacuum sealed it and that seemed to actually hold up pretty well again you're going to want it in a padded case and not nothing sharp bouncing into it or else you'll break the integrity of it and I also believe I uh, if I remember right I actually wrapped it in saran wrap, vacuum sealed it, put it in a bag and, and vacuum sealed it again or vice versa or I, again I double layered the protection because it's not something you want to take a chance on getting wet and not working when you need it. Uh, so there you have it. That's the methodology. Uh, one last part to this video and that's where I've opened this thing up after three to four years of storage. And uh, so you can take a look at that if you're interested. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. That fuels the channel. And uh, until next time. Unpacking a vacuum sealed rifle after three plus years of storage. Okay, uh, for those that don't know, the Keltec uh, Sub 9, Sub 2000s are a fold in half 9mm carbine. And this is a very compact, very good for backpacking or whatever, also, though it has some limitations, primarily being crappy sights. Uh, so let's go ahead and break this seal. Gosh, I kind of hate to do this, I've had it sealed for so dang long. But let's go ahead and uh, cut into this and see how everything's help, held up. Now at first, the first couple times I tried to do this, I tried to just vacuum seal the weapon and it didn't hold up uh, hardly at all because it just simply, all these sharp edges and everything, uh, cut through the plastic so you can see here I've taken this is this is poster board and uh, just standard poster board like you get for your kids school project and what I did was I wrapped everything in this poster board which I know you, you would think that's not a good idea because it's you know it's a paper product it can absorb moisture but uh, by the same token If it's dry and vacuum sealed, then it helps things to hold up. So there we go. There's the first layer. Again, a one layer poster board folded, sealed tightly. So that was the second layer that we just pulled off. And now we have our rifle inside. Now you'll notice this layer is also intact and it hasn't broken down. So we, I did double barrier on this. Uh, again, because I had so many issues at the first few times I tried it with the getting a hole in this and it not working so we double barriered it I think I'm gonna to have to cut some more here but let's uh, see what we can do Wow 
kind of interesting, isn't it? The outer layer. The, now this is vacuum seal material, but I've not I've not seen it. Uh, I've never actually had it come uh, separate like that. A very thin layer of the multiple flexible stuff, and then a little bit harder outer layer. Now, <laughs> uh, this is what uh, this is what I also used. Was this is just your uh, shelf paper, your rubberized, you know, put in your. Uh, Put in your uh, shelf, your closet, uh, cupboards, and and I use this again. This was all for the purpose of getting rid of all these sharp edges, so that you can uh, make your uh, materials last. So, so there we go. Layer of stretchy rubbery uh, shelf material and inside of that I only kept one mag loaded but uh, inside of that we got uh, this particular the older Keltex uh, the sub nines particularly these took Smith & Wesson model 59 mag so I have some 20 round magazines and a 17 round and I kept one 20 round magazine loaded uh, so you could put the gun at the ready after you went through the unboxing process so here you go Keltex sub nine and uh, there's no corrosion on it. A little bit of this patterning is just uh, where uh, where the matting was looked at or on it. So, but uh, yeah, totally clean, uh, totally usable, ready to go. So there you go. Sub sub nine, double preserved, vacuum sealed. Been that way for three years. Been inside a truck in uh, with a humid uh, under deck storage that caused rust previously, been in a, a horrific wreck where this thing got flopped and tossed around, albeit in the uh, padded case preserved, and it still stayed preserved. So while we're doing that, let's go ahead and take a look at the ammunition. And as you can see, I kind of did the same thing there. Any softer edges make it a little easier. I just basically have this in just a regular old Walmart bag and saran wrap so uh, yeah it's not like you're gonna pull this thing out immediately and just start shooting with it if you need it but if you ever broke down or ever were out camping or had anything go on again you can preserve for long term with this stuff so And a lot of it has to do, if you're going to vacuum seal something like that, you want want some layering. So, And all this is, uh, again, dry. And of course, I'm using scissors. I would use my pocket knife to do it otherwise, but... Uh, And normally, while I don't particularly think, uh, you know, vacuum sealing weapons and ammunition may not be the end-all be-all. I'd rather use cans or, you know, good cases or things like that. But, uh, but vacuum sealing does have its place and it can be useful if you apply it properly. And... Uh, and use a little bit of care in how you store it. You just have to understand its limitations. So there you go. Ammunition. Keltec Sub-9. And that's all been in vacuum sealed storage for several years in less than ideal conditions and it's in perfect shape. So uh, that gives you an idea of what you, what you might want to do if you are going to vacuum seal something, how to layer it, how to make it work. And uh, good uh, uh, another alternative way of prepping or storing stuff I hope you enjoyed this video on vacuum sealing for preparedness if so please like share and subscribe this video took a lot of time and effort to produce and while it's free for download for personal use please link and give credit commercial use of this video is expressly forbidden without my consent thanks for watching